Okay. Ah, I like tea. What is up guys, my name is Rafal and today we're gonna to talk about selecting your footage using markers in Adobe Premiere Pro. So whenever I'm filming live events or real estate, I don't really have a shot list to refer back to. And if I have a ton of footage, I need a quick way to separate the junk from the stuff I'm going to use. I've seen a couple of ways people do this, like opening up each individual clip and setting your in and out points or dragging everything into a timeline and using the razor blade tool to cut and delete all the moments you don't want. My method is kind of like the last one, except I'm not cutting out any footage because you never know when you'll need a couple extra of those frames. I like to use markers for that. If you guys haven't used them before, markers are meant to make notes on your timeline and they can be placed just by hitting M on your keyboard. If you hit M again, you can title the marker, change the color, make notes, all sorts of stuff. So they have a giant use, one of them being marking footage. So before I start showing you guys how to do this, we need to configure our keyboard shortcuts a little bit to make this as fast as possible. You guys see that there are several colors we could pick from our markers. And yeah, you can select the color from here, but it takes a couple of extra steps, which just slows you down in the long run. So I'm gonna show you guys my keyboard setup for marker colors. We're gonna click up here and go to keyboard shortcuts. And if we look at the keyboard, we see the numbers up top are set to changing the camera. I don't do multi-camera editing very often, so instead of cameras, we're gonna assign a marker color to each number. Click on the search bar and type in color, and that's gonna bring up marker colors. You got color one, color two, etc. From here, we just click in the blank area where we assign the key and match the number of the color to the number on the keyboard. And boom, now when you click a number on the timeline, you have the color of the marker pop in. Using color markers makes your timeline so much easier to read because you can set a color to anything you need to remember. You can use yellow for close-ups and blue for, for wide shots. When you're filming real estate, you can use red to mark a living room and white to mark a bathroom. Pretty much anything you need to remember. So now that we have our keyboard set up, let's actually start setting markers. I have some footage here from an event I filmed at the new Sigma Lens location in Burbank, California. Check it out if you haven't yet, it's pretty awesome. If I open this folder, you see that I have different types of footage, 1080p at 24 frames and 4K at 60 frames. The first thing I'm going to do is separate these clips into their own sequences. This is because I want the settings of the sequences to match the settings of the clips. It's gonna help us out later on. I'm gonna organize these clips by frame rate, just click up here, then click the first 1080 clip, scroll down and select the last. Then I'll right click and hit new sequence from clip. Now we have a sequence with all our clips lined up in order. We're gonna do the same thing for the 4K footage. Select the clips, right click, new sequence from clip. I'm gonna rename these two sequences so that I know what they are. Awesome, so we have our footage organized. Now we can actually start looking through it all and selecting the clips we're gonna use. So I'm gonna start scrolling through this footage until I find a moment I like. This looks awesome, look at that sun flare. If you guys haven't noticed by now, I like sun flares. I'm gonna find the moment I think I want the shot to start, which is around here. Then I'm gonna hit M to set my first marker. I'm gonna scroll over to where I think I want the clip to end, around here, and hit M again. These two markers are my unofficial in and out points for this clip, but I want this to look a little cleaner, so I'm going to go to my first marker, hold down Alt, and then click and drag the second marker. This gives your marker a duration so it's easier to see how long that clip is in the timeline. From here, if I decided I want any shots of Mac to be, let's say, red, all I have to do is make sure that marker is selected and hit two on my keyboard. And since we set that color to be number two earlier, it's gonna make it red. Let's find one more shot that we'll wanna use. I like this shot of the two speakers talking. So again, I'm gonna find a moment where I want the clip to start. It's gonna be around here. And I'll want the clip to end around here. And because this shot is of the speakers, maybe I'll want any shots of them to be blue. So I'll make sure the first marker is selected, hit seven to make it blue, and then I'll hold down Alt and click and drag this marker to the second marker. Now you guys might be wondering why I'm setting up the second marker in the first place if I'm just gonna take the first marker and drag it to the length of the clip. That's because when I hit Shift M, it sends me to the next marker faster. If I click and drag the first marker without there being a second marker, and then hit Shift M, it won't send me to the end. It'll just shoot me over to the next marker. So this just makes it faster to go from the beginning of the clip to the end. So I went ahead and marked all the moments I wanted to use from this footage and I did the same for the other sequence. And by the end, you'll have sequences that look something like this. It's very pretty. Okay, now it's finally time to start putting your story together and with your markers already set in place, you'll be able to just blaze through all your moments because you know where everything is. 
So I'm gonna start a new sequence and let's make it 1080p, 24 frames. Normally I would have a song or something ready, but for now let's just start adding clips. So here's the awesome thing about markers. I'm gonna to go to window and open up the markers window. This window will show all the markers I made on a specific sequence, including any titles I gave them. Let's say I wanted to start with a shot that establishes the location, which I decided to mark as yellow. All I have to do is click on the yellow box and bam, all my yellow markers will be lined up here. And I'm able to tell what each shot is by the thumbnail right here. So I'll click on this marker and it'll send me over to that spot in the source window. From here, I'll hit I to set my in point, then go over to the end of the marker, hit O for my out point, and then just drag it into my timeline and I have my first clip. Now, this isn't the only way you can scrub through your selects. Remember, you can hit Shift M to go to the next marker and Command Shift M or Control Shift M on a PC to go to the previous marker. And that's another way you can just scrub through all your footage. So if I wanted to scrub through my shots because I wasn't sure what I wanted next, I could just hold down Shift and then just start hitting M to take me to each marker that I set up until I find the next shot I want. Now the reason why I separated my footage into different sequences is because I want the option of slowing down my 4K footage manually. You could slow down all your clips to 24 frames per second by selecting them right here, right clicking, selecting modify, then interpret footage, clicking on assume this frame rate and then typing in 23.976 and that would slow down all your footage to about 40%. But again, I rather just have that option available to me in case I want some of my 4K footage to be normal speed. But there you have it guys, markers are a great way to help organize your footage and add a lot of speed to your workflow. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, a like and a comment won't hurt either. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.